Hi everyone I welcome you all to the platform of economics time today i'm going to answer the question you all face during the journey of being economist the question is is gdp a good measure of economic wellbeing so let's move on the answer please basically gdp measures both the economy's total income and the economy's total expenditure on goods and services so gdp per person tells us the income and expenditure of the average person in the economy because most people would prefer to receive higher income and enjoy higher expenditure so gdp per person seems a very natural measure of economic wellbeing of the average individual yet some people dispute the validity of gdp as a measure of wellbeing as in gdp doesn't allow for the health of our children the quality of their education or the joy of their play is it measures neither our careers nor our wisdom nor our devotion to the country it measures everything in short except that which makes life worthwhile it can tell us everything about for example india except why we are proud that we are indian so why then do we care about gdp the answer is that a large gdp does in fact help us to good uh, lead good lives gdp doesn't measure the health of our children but nation with a large gdp can afford better health care of their children gdp doesn't measure the quality of the education but nations with larger gdp can afford better educational system right moreover dg uh, gdp does not take account of our uh, careers our wisdom our devotion to the country but all of these attributes are easier to enjoy when people are less concerned about their basic necessities of life in short gdp doesn't directly measures those things that like that make life worthwhile but it does measure our ability to obtain many of the inputs into a worthwhile life right gdp is not however a perfect measure of wellbeing some thing that contribute to a good life but are left out of gdp the first one is leisure suppose for instance that everyone in the economy suddenly started working every day of the week rather than enjoying leisure on the weekends more goods and services would be produced and gdp would rise yet despite the increase in the gdp we should not conclude that everyone would be better off the loss from reduced leisure would offset the gain from producing and consuming a greater quantity of goods and services second one is GDP uses market prices to value goods and services. It excludes the value of almost all activity that takes place outside markets. In particular, GDP omits the value of goods and services produced at home. For example, uh, the child care provided in day care center is a part of GDP, whereas child care by parents at home is not. Another another thing the GDP exclude is the quality of environment. Imagine that the government eliminated all the environmental regulation. Firms could then produce more goods and services without considering the pollution they create, and GDP might rise. Yet, well-being would most likely fall. The deterioration in the quality of air, in the quality of water, would more than offset the gains from greater production of goods and services. Next one is GDP also says nothing about the distribution of income a society in which 100 people have annual incomes of 50000 rupees they have a gdp of 5 millions and note surprisingly gdp per person of 50000 so does a society in which 10 people earn just 5 lakh and 90 suffers from with nothing at all few people would look at those two situations and call them equivalent gdp per person tells us what happens to the average person but behind the average lies a large variety of personal experience that gdp doesn't consider in the end we can conclude that gdp is a good measure of economic wellbeing for most but not all purposes it is important to keep in mind that what gdp includes and what it leaves out thank you